Hey everyone, this is Wei and uh, thanks for joining me here once again. So it's time for another portrait drawing and this time is of Julia, which is one of my subscribers here. So uh, let's get started and I'll talk about the process along the way. All right, so to draw this portrait, let's just start out, you know, by plotting in some points and I always like to work um, on the left side first since I'm right-handed so I can see what I've drawn. So I'm just going to block in, uh, let's see, all right, let's just start with the, around the hair area right here. I'm just going to do that and then go from there because that's where, where her eye is going to be. So let's see, uh, let's see it right around here. All right, let's start from here. So this is going to be in shadow, but you can still kind of see her eye right here. All right, I'm just going to do a little bit of that, okay, just to blot it in. And then, all right, let's go down. This is here's all in shadow. This is going to be the nose. Okay, and then let's go. I'm going to go across to the other eye since that's going to be um, one of the major focus, you know, for a portrait, obviously, the eyes. So let's draw that eye. And I'm just gonna rough in, let's see, probably around that size. And if you're doing this and you know it's 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 not all that accurate, it's, it's okay. Um just kinda keep going because you know you will get more and more accurate as you just the more you draw. So let's see, now now I'm checking the proportions. Let's see the eye and then in between the eyes it's uh usually it's like the space of one eye. Uh, let's see it. So that's about uh, okay. So I'm gonna correct this eye right here. It's a little bit too far apart. So I'm gonna correct that. Okay, and then the hair is gonna come down here, and you can barely see the pupil. I mean the iris right there. Okay. All right, close enough, right? So now we can move down. Uh, let's blot out our nose. So we go straight down, we know um, from the corner of the eye, if we go straight down, we know we're gonna hit, all right, let me move this up a little bit. We know we're gonna hit hit the, her nostril, the, okay, on the edge. So to measure the angle, um, like how far down it goes, right? So I'm gonna envision the corner of her eye and going down to her nose and just kind of try to see that angle on the reference. I'm gonna try to sketch the same angle. So maybe like somewhere around here. Okay, and then we'll just go from there. And again, if the angle's wrong, you know, then you end up, you know, making the nose too long or too short. But let's not worry about too much because the most important thing is actually to just sketch it out, you know, draw something. Even if it's off, it's okay. Because again, if you need it to be really accurate, um, just trace it, seriously. I mean, that's how a lot of portraits artists do it. You know, they, they don't go by eye, you know. Um, all right, so we have that, and then we gotta go straight down to the lip right here. Uh, relatively short, right? So it's like, so I'm measuring from the corner, you know, to the, to the, to the lip, just trying to visualize the angle right around here. And then at the corner of her lip, uh, let's see, from this angle again, we're gonna go straight, it's a little bit, Alright, somewhere around there. If we go and we can check it, if we go straight up, it's gonna hit our iris, a pupil, right around there. So probably right around here. Alright, close enough. Let's move on. Her lip. Okay. So alright, so we kind of blotted out some of the major features. Now let's go go in and do the hair because it's actually this will help us in doing the uh you know, to cut off her face because that's how it is in the reference. And see her chin, probably around less than half, right? This direction, this angle right here. So right around here. Okay, and then we're gonna go straight up. And then, okay, we can start back up here now. You know, now that we have more reference. Okay, the hair, and then the corner of the hair, you see, you see we go straight up. It's right around her corner of her eye. So right around there. So we know that's kind of where the, the hair part. And we go straight down. Let's see the shadow area right around there, that distance. Okay, right around here. All right, then the 
cheekbones gonna go down right around here okay and then we got a little curvature there it's a shadow all right so we know all this part gonna be dark okay i'm not gonna darken this area because my hand goes over it and if i make it too dark then it ends up smearing everything right all right so let's see all right let's go back here now uh i do like to work on the left side first and again i shouldn't have put this here because now you know my hands on top of this i'm gonna end up smearing it but all right whatever at least i didn't make it too dark all right so now i am using a 4b right here so it's nice and soft and quick so for the shadow area i'm just gonna darken it here yeah, dark and dark and dark and see straight down right around there okay right here and then her lip here's a little bit closer I'm adjusting for it as I go okay and then now this part is pretty dark uh, let's just draw her iris pupil And actually, this whole side of the face is dark, so. All right. So at this point, it might look a little bit weird. Uh, usually, that's how it goes at the beginning. All right, let's, let's put a little bit more detail on this eye since this eye needs to be uh, cleaner. Corner of the eye, then this iris comes down, and then eyelid, and then let's do. We know that's gonna be dark, right? That's the pupil, and let's. It's not a lot of highlight in the photos, so, but I'm just gonna leave a little bit more. So I'm just gonna do a little circle like that, just so that I know that's where the highlight is, so I don't go into it, and then I'm just gonna shade the rest. And the eyeball is always kind of fun to draw because it really comes alive. The top is usually darker. And even if it isn't in the, in the reference, um, those are kind of things you can just kind of fake anyways. You know, just make it the top area right here a little bit darker than the bottom. It really gives it a nice, uh, uh, you know, overall round shape to it when there's a little bit of gradation in the shading. If this is darker and then this part is dark now the lower uh let's see some eyelash right there and remember we, you know um, we we'll always talk about this in drawing the portrait um the lower lid there's always uh some white right here right so that's it folds out so it's important to leave a little bit of that white all right so now i'm seeing more this is darker Right around there. Okay. All right. So now the eye is starting to pop out, right? And I'm just gonna keep using this 4B right now because it's really it's a little bit faster. Right. And once I straight straighten enough of this, um, I'll switch to a 2B so I can get a little bit sharper lines and. Uh, Adding a little bit more detail. And uh, actually, let's do it now. All right, so I'm gonna do a 2B. I'm gonna go in and shade it a little bit cleaner. Now, 2B is, a, is, if you don't know, it's harder as the number gets smaller. So, harder pencil means, well, a little bit finer tip, right? Finer tip that means you're gonna be able to hit in some of the shading, some of the areas on you know fill in the paper a little bit cleaner. Whereas the soft pencil is really you know leaves a lot of texture. And I am using uh, these are 80 pound sketching paper, drawing paper, Strathmore I believe, and there's a lot of texture to it. So if you use a soft pencil, you will leave a lot of. Uh, areas you know because there's a lot of bumps 
and it's nice you know it's, it's just overall it's a and yeah i love that kind of pencil look anyways and if you don't like it you can always just smear it with your finger or stump but for this one i don't know i might just keep this kind of texture overall all the way through all right let's do darker and I'm rotating the pencil just to get a little sharper edge and I can put in like just little lines like that just to make it look like there's a lot more detail than it really is. Put a little bit more eyeliner. Okay. Okay. So let's see how's that eye looking. Okay, it's actually looking okay. Alright. Let's shade it in a little bit more, a little bit cleaner. And here I'm fading it out I'm using a lot, very light touch on the pen, pencil. You know, don't push onto it, just kind of let it fall off your hand. All right, so now I have that. Uh, depends what you want to do. Well, let's, go, let's go to the other eye. So it doesn't look so odd now that we've done the other. Right. Now this part is pretty dark, um, and we're gonna have to shade it dark. And this will probably leave a lot more, you know, sketchy lines, which is fine. It's all part of a look, anyways. So I'm cross hatching right here. So I'm going one direction and then I'm going to the other. And that's how you get it darker. Because if you keep going one direction, you're gonna, sometimes it's difficult to hit those spots. It won't fill in the spots very nicely and that's why you need a cross hatch. Here, okay, I'm adjusting for the eye. I kind of messed up on the placement, but that's usually how it goes. You make adjustments along the way. So that's why you just kind of have to go for it, you know, at the beginning, if you're like uh, a little bit too timid and you're afraid to, you know, hit those areas, you're not gonna, you're not gonna learn as quick. You just kind of go for it and it doesn't turn out right, doesn't turn out right, right? It's always the next try. Okay, let's see, this can be a little bit darker too. All right, let's go down to the nose. Uh, let's see, the nostril is dark. Right here, we need to hit this dark so that, you know, this nostril will, will, will come forward. And then here, the nose, I'm gonna exaggerate it a little bit, give us a little bit more bounce light. Okay, this little bounce light right here. And then this is dark because it's in the shadow. And then you have this, I don't even know what you call this. Caught as part of the face, but all right. So then the lip right here is pretty dark. Okay, so I'm gonna hit it hard. And here's a little bit lighter. This part here, and the corner of the lip is always dark. So it tucks in. Lower lip's got some shadow on it, so it's very dark. Underneath the lip. All right, this I can't I can't see as much on the reference because it's relatively small, but I can kind of understand the structure of the face a little bit. All right, so now I'm filling the hair a little bit more. As you can see, you know my hairline you know, it's a little bit off at the beginning, but see how you can adjust for it as you keep drawing stuff. And then this is dark right here. Let's see how that yeah, pushes up. All right, now this part of hair is actually pretty important um, because it comes into the face. Now this part is light, and and then let's see, if go here. This part is very dark. All right, so I'm gonna shade this in real dark. And by shading it dark, this gives you know this part as if it's coming out. Okay, and this part is dark. And I do have a video on drawing hair, just to give you a little more understanding of it and 
check that out if you like. It's dark, dark. Here's a clump coming out. Okay, I'm gonna have to. See how I'm following the direction of the hair? It kind of gives it a nice flow. And this part's all dark. Let me see, it's a student frame, all right. Okay, and then her hand's right here, but I'm gonna skip that for now. Let's come back up here. Okay, and then her chin, let's do her chin line right here. And so it's just by making her, her, obviously her neck is dark, right? Uh, darker because it goes in. So just by shading that, now we lifted the chin model, right? And that's what shading is all about. It's just contrast and it'll bring out the form. So you don't have to draw like a line right here. You don't want, you actually don't want to, you know, go in and hit a line because if you look in the, re the reference, it isn't a line. It's just, it's kind of softer, you know, nice soft edge. And, Let's go up. All right, let's not do that side so I don't end up smearing again. All right, let's see. Okay, it's coming along, right? Okay, make this a little bit darker. This is pretty darker right here. So I can actually leave it kind of sketchy. It's all right. Okay, let's do a little bit more detail in the hair on the top so that. Now for the hair, um, I can use a electric eraser later and give it some more, bring back some of the white. But for now, I'm just kind of shading the dark a little bit more, try to figure out the flow of the hair. And that's the most important part, is figuring out the flow. Because once you figure out how the, everything's flowing, then it's a lot easier. Right, so this is dark. All right, let's save that for later. Uh, okay, I can switch to a 2B and let's put in some, a little bit more detail right here. Let's clean it up a little bit. There's a little bit of shading right here. And there's some shadow shading in here. I think if I should smudge this because the Shading on this is actually pretty, there's not a lot of hard lighting. So sometimes smudging might actually work better. That may be a little bit quicker. Okay. All right, let's smudge it, let's smudge it. All right, so I'm just, um, just gonna use my finger. Uh, I think it might work well for it's kind of soft, softer drawing. Because if not, then uh, if I want to shade or settle these, then I have to use a, you know, like a 2B or even like a B or, or even more, or even harder pencil, you know, just to get more subtlety in the shading. This will be definitely a little bit faster. That, that. And the hair, let's see, we can, we can fade it out. I'm not sure what to do. This side of hair, because sometimes you don't want to just, you know, you make this hair area all black, which is, you know, kind of what the reference is. It, it tends to take the art out of it, you know, it gets really boring, right? Um, it can be a little bit artistic. And that's what you know makes portrait drawing a lot more interesting is because you put your own spin to it. You control the lighting, you control the value so that you can have the view viewer, you know, see what you want them to see first. All right, so now that I smudged it, um, obviously things becomes a little bit lighter overall. So I'm just gonna go back in and hit some of the areas again. 
some major areas that's darker. So this park is very dark. This eye is darker. It's very dark in here. So now as, as I make this darker, then I gotta make, you know, the other face, part of the face darker, right? Because it's all kind of, it's all relative. So in a way I'm kind of working in stages because I, I, you know, because I didn't get the value correct right off the bat. I didn't go too dark. Okay. And remember you can't, so this part of paper right here, I, I push into it so hard. It's like, if I keep doing it, it's just kind of, kind of mess up the paper and I won't be able to draw on it much anymore. So let's skip that. Because if you do too much shading in one area, the, the tooth of the paper goes away. It becomes all flat, like smooth. And then once you reach that point, um, you really can't sketch on it anymore. And that's one of the pitfalls of, uh, you know, if you're a beginner or Kind of like me. I mean, I'm not. I'm not an advanced drawer. You know, you keep. You know, there's only a certain amount of layers you can put on it, any piece of paper before the paper gets all smooth. So, all right. So I'm just gonna put more highlight to the eye, just so that I can. You know, that's the focus, and then we can almost be done with this. Depends how much you want to push it further, you know. Okay, I'm going to use a 2B just to give this you know, a little bit more detail than the rest of the face. That way it will draw your eye to it. And remember, you know, any any area that you don't put a lot of detail where it's kind of fuzzy, that's the area that you know people will tend to see less, at least at least at the beginning. So that's how you try to focus their eyes. Like anything that's dark, sharp, and you know, very there's a lot of contrast and a lot of detail. You know, when you first look at it, that's your eyes just gonna be drawn to that. So if you want to spend most of your time on a, on a portrait, do it on the eyes, you know? And you'll see that uh, it really comes out. So here I'm using a 2B and I'm just, see how lightly I'm just kind of shading it in? Might have made that a little bit too dark, but okay. And that will just, you know, start slowly build up you know, more and more detail and more, a little bit more and more, more and more accuracy. Let's continue that. So now the eye, yeah, this eye is starting to pop out nicely. This part's probably darker, darker, darker. Okay. So the lip is kind of, uh, yeah, not too much stuff going on yet. Um, there's highlight on the lip, which is really important. And I'll bring that back out with the eraser. I'll do it shortly. Let me darken this so you can see what I mean. So this area here is actually pretty dark, so I'm just going to hit it pretty hard. Right. Okay. So this is another way of shading. If you just make, you know, where, where the, this is what they call a terminator, where the life ends. And then everything else is kind of, you know, depending on reflective light. You can make this a little bit lighter. Um, like you don't have to fill this thing all black and, and it'll still look good. And, and you see a lot of that in drawing. The way how they do the shadow, they make the Terminator, that area right there, darker. And then everything else just kind of fades out. And it's a little bit more artistic that way. All right, let's see, 
here, down here. It should be darker. You gotta be careful about making everything too dark, but then then it just kind of gets a little boring. We can always exaggerate it, right? Exaggerate it so that you can give it a little bit more hair than you know, slightly different flow. Look a little odd without the hand, actually. All right. So uh, actually, let me all right, let me bring out the electric eraser and let me show you what I mean. So let's say you have to lip like this. I'm gonna bring back some of the highlight, which is really important. See that? And that will give you back some of the highlight. Now, even on the top of the lip, let's say smear that. Okay, it's a little bit too much, obviously. No, okay, see how that brings out that the upper lip. All right, and then the bottom here is a little bit darker. So now that I have the highlight, I can be a little bit more careful and then you know shade around it. So I don't hit that area again. And then the bottom right here is actually a little bit lighter. I don't want such a sharp edge. I'm just going to use the eraser. Okay. And I'm just going to dab it. And that will give me some of the whites back. Okay. You see that? Just that this little area right here. Because that's usually um, lighter because it bulges out. Here, I'm just gonna fade it out a little bit. I think this whole area right here is a little bit too distracting, a little bit too sharp. It's bringing too much attention to it. Okay. So let's see where else are the eye. Well, let's let's do some of the eye right here. It's always. Okay, right here, you should white. So you see, it really brings out the sparkle, right? It just it kind of brings the life of the drawing out. Okay. All right, now I'm kind of looking at the camera image and because it's smaller. Now this is something important. Whenever you're drawing, it's like you, you know, you're so close up to the drawing, you end up not seeing the, uh, the overall value of things. So it's, it's nice to be able to just you know, zoom back and just look at what you've drawn and then and compare it. And when you do that, um, what happens is that you immediately see uh, a lot of errors in the drawing, like what is too dark or what is too, just things that are off. Okay. And I think you guys probably do it already. And if you don't, take your drawing and just, you know, uh, see it in front of the mirror, you know, see it uh, flipped. And it just looks like a totally different drawing. And it's, and it's because, you know, now you see it um, as it really is, right? Because when you're, when you're sketching, drawing this, so all you're seeing is this drawing. It's just, you're seeing the same thing over and over again. It fools your eye. So it's important to, um, to get a different perspective. So either step away uh, or even just turn it upside down or just bring it to a mirror. It really, really helps. All right, so this one, I'm actually gonna sketch in the, little, the hand right here a little bit just so that it gives the, the hair some, some meaning as to why it's doing that, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna shade the hand, I'm just gonna I'll just sketch it in like this. So now I'm just going to take a eraser and take it out. Okay. Okay. So with this dry, I mean, you know, it just depends on how much you want to do to it. Uh, all right. Um, let's go back up to the face. This hair area right here is bugging me because every time I look at it, it's a little bit too light. So I'm going to make it darker. 
Yeah, so you see how that takes away the, the emphasis of the hair and now, now you're looking back in the eye, which is good because this was just way too, uh, way too light. Um, but there are some strands, so I'm gonna hit that with a eraser. Okay. All right, let's do a little bit down here. Maybe even some smaller ones. Kind of just kind of making it up on my own. Um, all right. Let's see, again, it's, let's clean it up a little bit so that it's not so sharp. That will help fade it out a little bit. Now, if I wanted to uh, with the hair, now I can go in and drawing a little bit more strands around it and that will really bring out the white of the hair, right? Okay. Like if I make this darker, now this, this strand, you know, the area around it, it will really pop it up. Okay. Yeah, this whole hair area right here is a little odd. Is because this face needs to be darker right here, and that will bring the f the hair forward. Because this, I think it's just looking like it's blending into the face too much. Okay, so that pops it out, right? So you can see, you know, like just you start seeing things and you try to adjust for it, and sometimes, you know, I don't know, sometimes it just doesn't work. So. I, or you mix make things too dark. So now I'm starting to see a little bit more. And I'm making this a little bit darker, bringing things out, pushing this in a little bit more. And okay, this was a little bit too. Sorry, I'm gonna take it. I'm using a 2B, just this would just kind of fill in some of those gaps. There's something about this area bothers me. Okay. So you can see, you know, whenever you're working with dark drawings, it's, you know, you might run into issues and it is a lot harder to, to draw something that's dark where you gotta do a lot of shading. So this part, um, I think I'm kind of done. I don't want to go in too much. I mean, if we darken this side of the face too, you know, which would really be nice, but then it's gonna get really dark. So I'm just gonna, yeah. Maybe this can go a little bit darker. All right, so this is how the uh, final drawing turned out. Uh, one of the major uh, changes I did was just around the hair area because it was just a little bit too distracting right around her chin. So I kind of darkened that um, area quite a bit. But other than that, uh, most of the stuff happened on screen. So let's give it a shot and see how it goes. And I will see you next time.